Welcome to Behind the Story, where we explore the story behind your favourite stories. My name is Lisa Renee. I'm from the Collaborative Press, where we help authors self-publish, and I'm also a contemporary romance author of the Single Again series. I'm Naomi Craig, historical fiction author of Rahab's Courage. Uh, last show, we had a draw for Tony Shiloh's brand new release, Always a Wedding Planner. Make sure to check in the show notes below to see if that is you and you are the lucky winner. Um, and later on, we have the amazing, multi-talented Tabitha Bolden coming on. We're so glad to have her back on our show. But first, Lisa, what are you working on now? Okay, it's like so many things. I um, took up Tony Shiloh's advice and writing down, you know, each day what things I've got to do. So, um, which I often have it digitally, but you're just having that written down uh, for everything helps. So it's more achievable, not so overwhelming. Don't forget about that award. Tell us about your award real quick. All right, yeah, cool. So uh, yeah, I got this, scent, this chunky uh, medal here. Uh, so there was a Illumination Award, which is sort of international. And in the romance category, uh, Polarized Love got a place. Um, so yeah, that was, I applied for that at the end of last year. And yeah, early this year, we, we, we got it. So, but because I'm in Australia, I only just got my medal posted and some stickers. So I can do some author copies, sign them and I've got about 20 stickers that I can put on. So, yeah, so that's a bit of fun. And Donna in our critique group, she she won an award as well in her category. So that was fun. Yay. Well, congratulations to you and the Donna. Um, for me, okay, so everyone knows if you're an author, you need to have a newsletter. That's where you need to have your thing. So I'm going to tell you um, some of the things that are going around you should have on your newsletter is in order to get more opens and get it out of the promotion file and into the main file, you should um, get rid of all links as much as possible, get rid of all photos as much as possible. Um, I mean, not get rid of them, that sounds pretty harsh because how are you How are you gonna know about you? But the more links that are in there, if I understand it correctly, the more photos, then the more likely it's to be sent to your promotions. Um, you want to have a sensational title because then people will open it and read it. So I'm, I'm trying to apply all this. I am a bit of a slacker and a procrastinator anyway. So I'm waiting for the day before my newsletter. I kind of had it all planned out in my mind. Um, so what I did is I put the newsletter on like the blog section of my website. And then I just did, here's what's in this newsletter. Um, here's a giveaway, time sensitive, mind you, uh, biblical fiction spotlights, there's, you know, updates, just uh, bullet points of what's in my thing. And then I have the one link to take it back to my website. Again, that's what they say is good, because then you're on website time. And so I had my, my title was, it was pretty much all in caps, like I was yelling at you, like, <laughs> I have never seen this before, you know, and um, like, I genuinely want to know. So if someone has an idea about this, please let me know because I have mutant flowers and I want to know why. Um, so I had a skull and I had flowers, you know, mutant flowers. So first off, I get somebody messaging me saying, I think you've got a virus attached to your newsletter <laughs> <laughs> because this does not sound it apparently doesn't sound like me. Like <laughs> I have never seen that mutant flower, you know, <laughs> and <laughs> oh, no. I'm like, oh, okay, well, so much for the sensational uh, headline there. I'd struck out on that one. And then I also, I gave a broken link. So I tried to do the, oops, I gave you a broken link. Um, here's the corrected one. And it was broken again. So I epically failed all the way across on that newsletter. Um, my time sensitive giveaway gone. My <laughs> Nobody has told me about my mutant flowers, which I genuinely want to know. And um, so I, I don't know, there you go. I, I did actually link that and put it on socials and say, here's what I did, I goofed, I messed up, but still nobody has told me about my mutant flowers. So if you know about flowers, Please, I want to know. I have a question, a very serious question that I need to know the answer to. 
<laughs> oh, yeah. Well, any readers out there, you know, you can see what we go through to get our little newsletter into your inbox is not just a simple thing for us. Uh, I did I did try that advice. So I I posted a link in one of our um, author groups uh, that David Grufton, I don't know if that's, I'm saying his name right. Uh, he had a YouTube video on how to, you know, try and get your, mm -hmm. your newsletter out of the, the spam. But uh, I mean, I went to the extreme as well and I did a test like create an email to test it, but it was very hard um, and mostly still kept going into promos. So I think I had one link and one photo and still right. wanted to go there. So yeah, I thought, oh, well, give up on that. Uh, but yeah, you do need a good opening line and just experimenting and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 So if you, um, if you are a reader and you subscribe to an author's newsletter, why don't you comment below on what holds your attention? What's going to get you to open this newsletter and read all the way through to the end? If you can, you know, <laughs> are you the type who would say, Hey, your, your newsletter is broken. Can you please send me the real link? Or are you just going to unsubscribe? <laughs> Yeah, that's it. And it's good if they can add them to you, con add you to the context. If they want to not miss out on the updates, giveaways, often we're doing, uh, Naomi did lots of giveaways. I'm doing, I include book funnel promos where people can get some free right. books. So it's always, we're trying to add value and then give you a little bit update, um, personal, what's going on. Awesome. Well, let's move along to Tabitha. Um, let's welcome her on to the show. Our guest today is contemporary romance author Tabitha Bolden. Tabitha writes Adventure with Heart, where there are spiritual arcs and characters who are not afraid to be real. Sometimes they're sarcastic too. Hmm, I wonder why. <laughs> Tabitha loves a good banter between characters, whether they're siblings arguing over who deserves the last cookie or romantic interest dancing around their feelings. Tabitha, welcome to Behind the Story. Thanks for having me. Tabitha, for those who aren't familiar with you, tell us a little bit about you and what you write. Well, um, I'm a homeschooling mom. I used to work as a medical assistant in a doctor's office. I did that for 10 years before I became a stay-at-home mom and started homeschooling our two boys, who are now teenagers. Pray for us all. Um, I write, I won't say across the board, there are a few a few limitations, but I do enjoy contemporary romance. I've been working on a 1940s mystery and I do Christian fantasy. Wow. So the question should have been, what don't you write? <laughs> okay. So your latest release, Stealing the First Mate, um, released the 25th. So tell us what right. sparked the story. Um, well, I knew from the beginning that it would be Darcy's story. She showed up in Mishaps Off the Mainland. She's Mel's assistant. So her part was easy. It was finding someone to go along with her where I ran into some trouble. Um, then I came across this little bitty sentence in our information that Sandy had sent out about the Independence Islands. And they said, we want to focus on the pirates. And it was like, you know, that light bulb moment, everything just sort of went, oh, okay, okay, pirates. Yeah, I can do that. So how do you bring modern pirates into a story? Well, you're at the beach, so you go on a boat tour and you meet a pirate and they fall in love. Well, actually, Nigel's been in love with her forever, so we get to explore the friends to something more, which is actually a trope I've not done yet. So that was a lot of fun because it's my favorite to read. It was interesting to write that for once. Excellent. And you did a, such a great job, such a fun story. I love the pirates. I think I want to be Darcy when I grow up, you know, work with horses, work on a pirate ship. Yeah. I'm, I'm good with, <laughs> with all of that. Um, so Lisa and I have had the privilege of gleaning information and wisdom from your your amazing talent and your knowledge whenever we have need but i don't think many people realize the depth of your creative fountain so what tell tell our our viewers what is your total word count that you are on target for this year um i just crossed the hundred thousand word mark for now my goal for the year 
will be 250,000. So I'm on track at the moment after picking up another contract for the year, I'm, I'm on track to finish as long as I can keep those daily word counts going the way they're supposed to be. So wow. now I, I just to, to rephrase that, that is a quarter of a million words that you are. <laughs> yeah. How many books does that translate to? That's um, that will be four, that'll be four, um, a 90,000 word Christian fantasy. And then all of the rest are anywhere from 40,000 to 55,000. Oh, I miscounted. That's five. It's actually five that I'm doing, not four. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. So, uh, you've got a bachelor's in creative writing. Uh, was that last year that you completed that? Yes. It's yeah. been almost a year. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So what's what craft technique that you're aware of from what you've learned in your bachelor's? Like, what are you applying that um, to these books that you've got this year? What Tell us which is your technique that you've been using. One of the biggest things that I took away, both from classes that I took then and from conferences that I've been going to in the last little while, is um, making the scenes count. Each scene needs to have a purpose because... I do a lot of free writing and when I'm free writing I just explore wherever the story wants to go which is how I wrote for a long time um, until recently I've started doing a little more outlining but the big thing that I noticed is I tend to drift off course you know we would start the scene in one place and by the end of it we might not only be in a totally different location but the character's entire mindset has changed so I've had to really bring that in and make each scene have a reason for being there. Otherwise, somebody's going to make me chop it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. And you've only got, with these uh, contracts that you've got, most of them are 50,000 words. So you've sort of got to get, get it through the story. Yeah, and yeah. you can't yeah, on... spend 3,000 words doing nothing. You have <laughs> to have a purpose. That's right. So since you've been doing the Island series, have you found that you're plotting more do you have to submit a synopsis or an outline before you get started has that made you yeah yeah we um we have to do a synopsis it doesn't have to be a very long synopsis not like um I know there are some contracts you have to send like a three to five page just to just to get the contract but what we've been doing is um about a paragraph that we send in so you, there's still a lot of room to change things, move things around. You can change your plot and, and whatever you, you need. But I have been outlining a lot more. And it has helped more than I expected it to because I was a pantser for years as far as writing. Just sit down and write whatever came to mind. But the outlining has really helped to, to bring it all together. And it actually helps me to be able to write faster knowing what's coming next. Definitely. I hear that a lot, that it helps you write fast. And I find for me, like, I just, it's easier just to get straight into it. I know what's going to happen in this yeah. chapter, you know, so. And I can still change things if I need to. Yeah, same. That's, yeah, that's good to have that flexibility. Yeah. So you did this bachelor's in creative writing and I've noticed like your writing has just grown so much in, um, in that time. And then now you're doing some editing for the Collaborative Press, working with me. So mm -hmm. you've got to been doing a few jobs, even nonfiction, which is awesome. Right. Um, I noticed like uh, with one of your books uh, in the critique group, you were just, um, your Alice book, which we'll talk a bit, bit later with the um, steampunk uh, style. So yeah, there was just so many verbs and it was so much action. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So <laughs> I said to you, let's um, get like a, uh, reference sheet for authors that we can put on the Collaborative Press web website because you're just so awesome at these bits <laughs> and putting action into that. Is that something you just um, grown in time or is it from doing the course, you know, that focusing on strengthening your sentences? A lot of it has just came in over time, just gradually strengthening sentence structure and verbs as I go along. Um, there was one author... I'm never going to remember who it was that said it. I've seen it so many times in so many places, but she said, why walk when you can shuffle or stumble or, you know, you can, you can tumble into a room where you can do this or do that. And she said, why use something that is ordinary when you can use something that is extraordinary. So I've been trying to really focus on bringing that in as well and sort of taking the story to another level when I can. 
and there are times when you can walk or you can whisper or or whatever but it, it's more fun if you can amp that up a little yeah definitely and i noticed there's such a big difference to um with the alice uh, i'm not sure what your title is going to be for that um it's coming out next year what's that yeah. called have you got a title yet? Well, I've been calling it Madness in Wonderland because it's a mashup of Alice in Wonderland and Frankenstein. And of course, we all, everyone, the mad scientist is what they call Dr. Frankenstein. So, but I don't know that I'll get to keep the title. That's just what it is in my head. Yeah, awesome. Cool. I noticed that was quite more of a literary style. Like it's, um, it's just beautiful prose and, you know, there's so much action. You've got so much action. Um, <laughs> on the edge of our seat, <laughs> so many scenes like that. And then, but you've been amazing to be able to switch to the romance, you know, like, um, you know, contemporary romance is like a different genre altogether. And people just want to be, you know, we talk naturally. It's a different era it's in today, whereas the Alice one seems to be back in time sort of thing. So how did you go with switching from genres like that? I think whenever I first started writing, I wrote with an older voice um, because during my first editing, I know Shatona, I, I had several comments of you need to bring this a little bit more forward. You need to be a little bit more modern in the speech patterns and things like that as, as you're writing. So I've always had a tendency toward an older style of writing. So I just let that go. Whenever it came time to write Alice, I completely immersed myself in the time frame that I wanted it to be. And I would sit and play steampunk music on the tv while i played and look at the the videos the visuals that they would put up of airships and the clothing styles and things like that so it was just a lot of visual work to help set the mood for what i was wanting to write and that helped bring the voice in with it so pro productivity what is your how do you keep all of this straight how do you how do you get it in a place where it's natural and it flows and like you just mentioned how do you, if you can make sure you meet your word count every day you meet your goal but how do you get to that place lots of notebooks <laughs> and lots of notes <laughs> i think if i could have a notebook for every book i would do it um basically i keep plot points like I don't outline on my computer, I outline by hand. So I fill in scenes by hand and that helps with my creativity and my style that helps everything to flow together better. So that when I sit down at the computer, I have this mental block when it comes to the computer sometimes, like once it's on the screen, I can never get rid of it. I can't change it, it's there, it's stuck, it's forever. So a lot of times I will handwrite to get the scene started and then move to the computer so that I can get the productivity that I need for the day. But a lot of times it starts out with pen and paper, especially in the beginning, whenever I'm writing my synopsis, I'm writing character arcs, I'm writing the story arc, that all goes in the notebook. I, I use the pen and paper first round too. I, somehow it just seems you feel more creative. I can, mm -hmm. I can actually... like, okay, I don't like it. I can just scribble this out and we can change yes. it, you know. Yes. You can do the same thing on the computer, but in my head, there is, there's just, there, it's different. Yeah, so. yeah. You can uh, pick up your, la your notebook and just go somewhere and then you're tied mm -hmm. down to a computer and suddenly they're all creativity drains and... Yep. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, now we we had the opportunity to get some questions from viewers um stacy wants to know if any of your characters are similar to people you know i would say most of them are similar to someone that i know uh if you want specifics nigel is based not nigel zeke is based on my brother the sarcasm, Nigel is sarcastic too, but he is not as sarcastic as Zeke from Mishaps Off the Mainland. So Zeke is basically a 50% copy of my brother and his just witty, snappy comebacks that he's he's known for in our family. <laughs> Are you gonna tell him oh, that? Oh yeah, he knows, <laughs> he knows. Um, let's see, who else? There are a few. Okay, Miss Evelyn is basically my grandmother. Um, if my grandmother was still alive, then that's 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 where Miss Evelyn came in from, is 
her little um her little sass and her taking care of everyone and just taking them you know she takes people home like they're strays and takes care of them that that's my grandmother oh sweet so that's great okay uh we've got renette she says i know your characters are spunky and get into crazy situations what's a similar situation you've been in if there's any oh i'm boring (laughs) <laughs> Y'all, I, I don't get into much. There, There is one, uh, probably the only, well, if I thought about it for about a week, I could probably come up with something else. That's how introvert brains work. But I'll think of something tonight, you know, about midnight or next week. But there was one when my husband and I, our very first vacation back in 2006. So we drove from Tennessee to Florida. We were going to go to Orlando and watch WrestleMania because we were huge wrestling fans back then. So you take us from this little bitty town where there are 1,200 people to Orlando and you drop us in the middle of Orlando with no cell phone because this is 2006 and we knew no one. We knew nothing. We were just there. So we take a taxi. We go to WrestleMania. We leave WrestleMania, it's two o'clock in the morning. There are no taxis. The police cordoned off the area like three blocks away from the stadium and there are no taxis. So you have thousands of people walking the streets of Orlando to find a taxi. We end up in this little bicycle taxi with one of the best people we've ever met. He was hilarious. So we're in this, we're in Orlando at two o'clock in the morning in a bicycle taxi going down the street. And this guy is just talking up a storm Mm -hmm. and telling us about all these people that he's met and all these things that he's done. So he takes us half a mile, a mile, maybe into Orlando to get us a taxi so that we can go back to our our hotel. And it's like, okay, this is enough adventure for us. We're done. (laughs) We're not going anywhere else. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> which we ended up going to Daytona Beach the next day and got lost going to Daytona Beach so yeah cool. so that was that's probably our biggest adventure ever yeah did, did that, you put that did in that a story? story did that you put it in one of your stories no I haven't you gotta do that I hey? haven't <laughs> maybe that something a- yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've got you've got your adventure if you ever need it in there <laughs> mm-hmm. all right so in honor of stealing the first mate we are challenging you, Tabitha, to a okay. lightning round of pirate jokes. <laughs> are you ready for this? Um, the no. first one, <laughs> the first one was submitted by Kathleen. What happened when Bluebeard, Bluebeard fell overboard in the Red Sea? What? <laughs> he got marooned. <laughs> And I, would say, uh, I would say Maroon. Okay. I was gonna say I was gonna say he would float, but that doesn't have anything to do with being a pirate. <laughs> That's just because there's a lot of salt in the Red Sea. <laughs> I don't know if you're gonna get any of these jokes, but we will just uh, have fun. Um, tell you, you just gotta think like a yeah. second grader. Are you gonna try to work out the answer? I can never get jokes. Cool. Yeah. All right. What does a pirate yeah, say? <laughs> what does a pirate say on his 80th birthday? I'm 80. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Uh, oh, okay. I'm 80. Oh, hey, I gotcha. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't believe there you, you got that. <laughs> Nicely done. How much did a pirate pay to for his ear piercings? doubloon uh, no what? a buck an ear <laughs> uh, okay <laughs> i like that all right a moving along okay <laughs> moving along yep, with i gotta this. bring it down a little more <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't think too hard about it what's <laughs> <laughs> the first thing that comes to mind how much did the pirate pay for his hook and peg leg An arm and a leg. (laughs) (laughs) That one was pretty good. 
Yeah. Okay. How about this one? What did a pirate say when his wooden leg got stuck in the snow? Okay. The first thing that comes to mind is shiver me timbers. There you go. Yeah. You got it. Okay. <laughs> You're just too smart. I just never get this. Uh, why couldn't the pirate crew play cards? Because they had hooks for hands. Because the captain was standing on the deck. <laughs> That's good. All right, where do pirates buy their hooks? Hmm. At the hook store. At the second hand store. That's a good one. Oh, what that's is... a good one. <laughs> it was pretty good. What is orange and sounds like a parrot? Okay, that one's got me. What? I'm surprised you didn't get that one, actually. A it's carrot. Kind of nothing to do with pirates. <laughs> a carrot. A carrot. <laughs> and <Daryl>. Carol. <laughs> Because my brain said it's because my brain heard like a parrot, not like parrot. <laughs> well, if you add the a in front of carrot, it works for that too. <laughs> yeah, a carrot. Yeah, you can have all of these jokes when you. <laughs> you yeah. can, I'm sure you'll use them for some good reason. Well, in uh, in the fourth book, yeah, yeah, fourth book, the pirates are back except this time it's a deep sea diver who is on a uh, a hunt for the owner of a sunken ship. So the pirate jokes, there, there's a lightning round at the restaurant of pirate jokes. So these will definitely be pulled in. <laughs> <laughs> Good, it will have a purpose after all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, why do pirates carry swords? Why? Because, because I can't carry something else, but I don't know what. Because swords can't walk. I have one for you. What's a pirate's favorite fast food restaurant? Is it Arby's? Arby's. Arby's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks for um, this interview today, but we just want to just uh, find out what you're actually doing now. What's coming up for you, Tabitha? What are you working on? I'm working on a 1940s fairy tale retelling mystery. Ooh, how exciting. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, the Which is going to be, yeah, it'll be Robin Hood as a jockey in the 1940s. So more horses. You know, and he's, you know, the whole, the whole Robin Hood thing is steal from the rich and give to the poor. So that makes him a pirate, right? Definitely. You know, for someone who loves cats as much as you do, I don't think I've ever seen a cat come into your, except for Alice, if you count the Cheshire cat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you should throw um, a cat in see. somewhere. When is the cat? Book five. Island, <laughs> Independence Island's book five. There's a cat and a German Shepherd lots of fun yeah the german shepherd is a retired military dog so he's uh he's not very used to cats oh how funny and the cat the cat is a main coon so it, it's gonna not very not be very nice to the dog either that's awesome that's awesome <laughs> is that sarge he gets his own story yeah, yeah. awesome so what what is your website and how can um our viewers get a hold of you Oh, you'll be so happy. It's a lot shorter this time than it was last time. <laughs> <laughs> so it's TabithaBolden.com. Just my name, dot com. T-A-B-I-T-H-A-B-O-U-L-D-I-N.com. Well done. Good on you. Much simpler. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. And it's always a pleasure to have, a, have you on our show. So we can't wait to have you back on again. Pleasure to be here. Um, if you will look in our show notes, we all have a freebie for you. Tabitha has a free uh, full-length novel, um, Macy's Dream, for you to download when you subscribe to her newsletter. Uh, and I also have um, my biblical fiction about 
Phelan and his talking donkey. It's called On Desolate Heights. That's free when you subscribe to my newsletter. And I've got Act One, A Polarized Love, which is on the links as well as a Navilia. And Tabitha is also offering a chance to win an ebook copy of Stealing the First Mate. So make sure you get a copy of that. All the Ireland series books have been fabulous. And Tabitha is at the star author, in our opinion. <laughs> <laughs> She's in our critique group. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we love her book. So yeah, it'll be great. If you guys can enter the giveaway, the, the link is in the show notes. And um, for the, yeah, be sure to follow Tabitha. We'll have her links everywhere. Give her a like on social media. Um, and this is a this is a picture of stealing the first mate. Let me see if I can get that in there. So it's lots of fun. It's a great book. There's dancing pirates. Um, and that's all for this episode. Until next time, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Thanks for joining us.